Thanks, Chris. So I'll just see if I can share the right screen. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so uh, my Teams has just disappeared, so I can't monitor that, but whatever. Um, yeah, so I'm going to essentially just show you some practical advice for editing video because obviously we're all going to be <laughs> Um, creating video based content, I think, for the foreseeable future. And I was looking for an, uh, a solution for myself and I came across DaVinci Resolve, which is actually a really good commercial um, software for editing video and it actually happens to be free. So I thought I'd do a, a presentation just to highlight to colleagues that this, this is available and to sort of go through some example workflow of how you might edit it. Um, so what we're going to cover really is is some simple things basically what to re what to download i'm going to give you a quick overview of the interface and and how to use it for for various aspects um what i'm going to do is is edit some video that i've been capturing myself over the last few months of of me testing various uh, different um, virtual production methods out uh, um what I expect most colleagues will do is have some video that they've captured through something like Open Broadcaster. So Chris has, uh, has done a nice website for how to use Open Broadcaster to capture a video. Um, so I suggest you sort of think of this as the sort of follow on from that, which is how we can you creatively edit that video um, to make it a little bit more engaging. And the idea here is that uh, we have different types of content, right? So we we might need to have some new tools for editing see these kind of video titles. Um, so one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to really uh, present myself as an expert in this this software. I've literally been using it for a few weeks now, so it's it. I would highly recommend there are thousands of YouTube tutorials for this particular bit of software. I recommend a guy called Casey Ferris on YouTube if you want to sort of learn more about the the ins and outs of editing with it um, and i will acknowledge that davinci resolve is quite a complex bit of software so there is um there is a question of whether this is too much for for especially for colleagues who haven't used this kind of software before um what i would say is is that it's actually powerful enough that you can do things that maybe stretch your technical knowledge um, it will enable you to do those things. So, and it's not that scary once you try and play with it. Um, so, the other thing is that I'm not entirely sure how this relates to pedagogy, in that there might be better ways of presenting the same kind of material. What I'm saying is that this is more of a tool set. This is is an enabler for us to think about what kind of you know how we present things in in video contexts. So. Um, I'm just trying to avoid some of the emergencies that we had before when we had to put video content online and it was literally a video of our slides and that kind of thing, which is obviously what we want to avoid. Um, so first thing to do if you want to get DaVinci Resolve is go to the website of the company that makes it and this is a company called Black Magic Design. So the URLs in there, you can get the slides off Chris and, and sort of go to that link. But um, I'm using the Windows version here. This is the da DaVinci Resolve 16. This is the free version. So there's a paid version called Studio and then a free version. The free version will do absolutely everything we need, I think, um, unless you're doing advanced, advanced color grading and that kind of thing. Um, it is useful to get a cheat sheet. I'm not going to use one now. Um, I'm going to use the mouse, but you can use lots of keyboard presses for a lot of this stuff to, to actually speed up your workflow. Um, so all of these kind of things, usually what's what's a good idea is to print out a cheat sheet and put it on your wall just so you don't forget which controls do which things. Uh, and so I'm going to sort of switch to a presentation, a quick demonstration of the actual software now. Yeah, it's weird how Teams shares things. I, I was hoping to share the desktop rather than the actual application. But OK, so here's, um, let's just what you would do is when you start DaVinci, it basically chooses a, a new project. And this is what you are presented with if you click that new project. So essentially, this is an empty um, project. And just to sort of give you an overview of what you're seeing here, 
there's a thing called the media pool, which is the sort of videos of that you've captured that you want to be able to edit. There's a, a number of different pages, they call them pages, um, that configure the, the interface for different types of um, task. And then the, the various pages have um, different configurations. So first thing we need to do is we need to bring in some um, content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag some video clips that I've already recorded um, using OBS. And I've, I'm going to add those to my media pool. So I'm literally just dragged them into the media pool area and they show up as, as media clips. So what I generally do is most of my time I'm spent in what we call the edit page. So in, in, in these different interfaces, they present different types of workflows. And the one that I generally use um, the most, oops, uh, I just dragged those into that media pool. Uh, the one I use the most is the edit page. So what we've got is a number of um, different clips of me trying different technologies out. And what I want to do is, is essentially edit a video of, of this um, content into something that I could present. Um, so tr traditionally, the, the sort of easiest way of adding sort of the video is to actually drag from the media pool into the timeline. This, this area here is called the timeline. And what you'll find is that it's the thing that you, allows you to sort of preview what the video content is. So you'll see that the preview window up here and then the actual sort of timeline match up. So you can use this thing called a scrubber to actually um, tell what the video is going to look like. In this case, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of virtual production, so I'm just playing with that kind of thing. And um, so there's a few sort of key things that you'll probably want to do. Sorry, I've got a, a grass cutter outside my door, of course. Um, you probably want to edit these videos down. Um, say you've captured a little bit too much footage and you want to be able to trim them. Um, often what I'll have is quite a long set of um, video content that I've captured with errors in. And usually what I want to do is I want to sort of cut out some of the errors or I want to take the, the version of the one that actually came out well and edit that into the, the, the whole timeline. Um, so what we would generally do is if I want to sort of trim uh, a clip, so I want to sort of alter the duration of it. So how long, you know, how much of that clip is being shown, you can just grab uh, with the mouse on the edge of the clip and you can do that on the start or the end. And what that means is that it'll, it's basically saying this is how long I want the clip to last for. Um, so that's one way of editing. Now, usually what you'll have is you'll have um, a couple of different clips. So say I've got a longer clip here. Now, when I drag that other clip in, what you've probably noticed is that there's now two streams of information. The first one is a video stream, which is what the video is showing. The second one is an audio stream. So that clip I've recorded with voice um, enabled on in OBS and it's actually recorded the audio as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute that just so it doesn't play over my voice while we're playing. But you can edit this this um, video and audio together, and that's generally what you would do. So um, if we actually look at this some of this footage, this is what I would maybe do, like a little green screen section with some game content in the background in my case. Um, and what I'm doing is a little sort of uh, voiceover of uh, a narrator narration of what the students are seeing in the image. So let's just say that I want to only include a small subsection of this. Well, so you want to be able to trim the rest of this video away. So you can use a thing called the blade and it actually, if you hover over the icons, it'll actually come up with the, the different sort of um, key presses to use. So in this, in this case, we can use this icon to enable blade mode and click on the video at the point where the playhead is, this this thing, the, the sort of red icon thing there. And that selects the, the cut point for when the video should be trimmed. So I can now delete off by pressing the delete key, the rest of that video. Now, the thing to, it, to notice here 
is that you're not actually editing the video. You're not changing what the video is. All you're saying is this is how much is going to be in the timeline. So you could actually um, you can extend that video back out if you wanted to. You know, if you if you think that the timing was wrong. Um, so that idea of like cutting between different clips is actually um, a pretty important part. So what I will often do is I'll I'll trim the different um, clips down, try and uh, if I've got anything where I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm umming and ahhing a lot, I will try and cut that kind of thing out of the video. Uh, so this is a really clean way of doing the, the video um, content. So what might you want to do um, in addition to this? So let's just say I've got another clip and I want to append it here. But in this case, if I just sort of move forward a little bit, what I maybe want to do is instead of like having a hard transition here, so you'll see that as, as one clip moves into another, the transition is literally just a hard cut. And maybe that's something I don't want to have happen. So what you can do is you can go to what we call the effects library, and this is the, the page here. Sometimes that'll be disabled. You can just enable it with the, the um, buttons up there and I can say well I want to do a video transition and I want to do a cross dissolve so if I can I can drag a cross dissolve over the footage so the edit point that I was at and it will um, if I just play it do a dissolve between those two things so it's a little bit less abrupt and you can edit these things um, by literally sort of dragging the handles around so you can choose how fast the dissolve is and that kind of thing so these these um titling effects are all available in the video transitions but there's also things um that you can do to the footage so you can change the coloring of it you can retime it you can do quite a lot of editing um just in this edit page so let's just say uh for for argument's sake that i want to only have a couple of um, a short clip of that. So I'm going to edit that last part out. And let's say that um, I'm going to export all of this. But before I want to do that, maybe I want to add some information to say what the students are seeing. So what I would generally do is, is come to the titles part of the um, interface here. And titles are essentially text-based overlays that come over the top of your footage and give some information. Um, so if I go to the left lower third, I can actually drag into the timeline a title. If I scrub back to where the title is, you can see that it's got the text in the, the left-hand side here. Um, now that's a bit of a dull title, so let's get rid of that one. Oops, get rid of that one. Um, so let's try and find a more interesting title. Lower third corners, one line. So these titles have um, different animation sort of setups and those kind of things. So um, it's worthwhile playing for, to, to sort of find the titling you lead. And these titles are created in what we call the fusion page. Now, I'm not going to sort of go over this right now, but you can actually create your own titles the way that you want them. So where you want them on the screen, what text fonts to use and those kind of things. But one of the important parts here is you see that the text that is being presented here is actually available in the properties panel up in the top hand right. So I can um, actually edit the text that's being displayed in the title and all of this is nicely animated. It's nicely timed and you'll see that it um, goes off the screen properly. You can again drag the, the timelines and change how fast or how, you know, the timing of all of this stuff. So it's actually quite a, an easy system to just get a reasonably nice looking presentation together. Um, and that that's kind of the power of this, right? I, what I'm interested in is essentially removing any areas that I've captured in OBS when I've recorded my content, quickly um, cutting that kind of stuff out and then creating a final um, video that I then present to the students or upload to Panopto or whatever. 
So just to show you how that, that works, the final part really that we need to look at is the deliver tab. So deliver gives you a presentation of the timeline. Um, and this is where you would actually encode a video for output. So if you look in the top left here, there's a number of settings for different um, output formats. And usually what I would choose is something like uh, YouTube and maybe switch it to MP4. Um, you can actually get it to upload directly to your YouTube account if you wanted to do that. Obviously, we're, we're storing things for later up, upload to Panopto, for instance. Um, so what will you do? You would give it a title. So um, uh, choose a location for it. So I usually output to the same um, video place. And what you can do is you can choose either to output the entire timeline or an in-out range. And I'm not going to set an in-out range now. But what you do is you click the Add to Render Queue button. And what that does is it actually creates a new um, job that if you click Start Render, will actually render a final video. So it will it will basically, if you press the space bar, you can actually see what that final output will look like. So the space bar is the thing that starts playing and you can see the preview of what you're going to get as a final output. And usually what I would do is I would edit everything in the edit page and then come to the um, deliver page and just sort of preview it to make sure it's going to be the way I want it and I haven't missed any edits. And then I would set the video um, in the output format and then I would just say add to render queue and then start render. So it won't take too long. It's actually quite a quick um, process for rendering out. Uh, I'm not going to do it now just because of, because of the time. But essentially what, what you'll have at the end of it is a an edited view, video that you would then upload to whatever service that you want to make available to the students. Um, so a few things to note is that there are a bunch of different pages here. And just to sort of... Um, to highlight what these are, the cut page is actually a place where you can really um, fine tune the way that those cuts and edits are actually going. So um, you can modify the sort of where in the, the video timeline those edits are. But one thing you can't do is you can't see the sort of whole of that. This is the whole pipeline of the video that you've got, and you can't really get a very clear view of of the whole thing. So the edit page I would recommend is a way of um, seeing the whole video. So if you press the Alt key on your keyboard, I, I don't know what it is on the window on the Mac, you can actually zoom in and out on the whole timeline. Um, so usually what I do is I try and have it sort of so the video is mostly available and you can, uh, you know, you can move the playhead there. So the cut pages is for more fine grain cuts. Probably don't need to use that an awful lot. The fusion page, just in case you sort of see it, is a, a node based system that allows you to do things like that text based titling, but you can also do things like masking out regions, making green screen effects and those kind of things in this page. The color screen, this is where um, Da Vinci actually is probably the market leader in that it allows you to modify the coloring of your videos and uh, a lot of creative people use this for doing things like setting a particular mood in a, a bit of video content so da vinci kind of started off mainly focusing on this part of it so the actual editing is actually more recent and then the final page before the deliver page is fairlight and fairlight is actually the audio editor so you can actually do things like add a voiceover channel in here and edit the voiceover to match the video content. So if I wanted to sort of, um, if, I, if I wanted to play the video and do a voiceover at the same time, I could record it in this um, interface and then go back and edit it with the new audio channel in here. So that's a really powerful um, use case as well. And then finally, the de deliver page is basically where you take the footage that you've edited and output it for final use. So it's actually a, a relatively simple workflow. It 
sort of flows left to right. I generally skip the cut part and just go straight to edit. So it, it, as you can probably see, it's actually quite simple to use. You know, it's mainly just sort of dragging clips in and selecting things like cut points and then just deleting um, particular parts of the, the content that you don't want. And again, dragging on the sort of sliders to, to choose timings. Now, one thing that you probably um, have seen in other interfaces is that you can drag these sort of sliders around and other parts of the video will go to match. That's called ripple editing, and it's, it's pretty common in almost all video editors. Um, that can be really useful. Again, all of this stuff is available in terms of, uh, you can use quick key presses and stuff rather than having mouse keyboard. You can you can learn a lot of these kind of editing interfaces and there's, there's obviously people who do this, you know, full time, they get really quick at doing this kind of thing. Um, what I'm suggesting is that all we need to do is really learn the very basics to get a much better production from our OBS captured videos. So with that, I'll uh, try and stop sharing the screen so we can actually um, discuss this. Brilliant. Um, as I've said in the uh, chat, we're, we're, we're kind of slightly over time. Um, but if any, we will we'll stay as long as Phil's happy to answer questions. There was one question from the chat. Uh, Nuren, do you want to um, just unmute and ask Phil directly? Hi, Phil. Thank you very much for the uh, brilliant demonstration. I quite enjoyed it. Uh, my question is for lectures, like theoretical lectures. Um, do I, could I import a PDF file of a chapter or do I actually need to screen capture it and then import it as a video file? Um, now that's a good question. I, I'm not entirely sure I've tried actually importing PDFs, but yeah, you could certainly capture a desktop. So what I would generally do is I would, um, for each slide, I would go into OBS and capture my desktop, play the PDF file in that, capture it as a video, because then I could edit it in in um, in the timeline a bit easier, I think. But yeah. it might be that you could probably just drag it in to the media pool and drag it straight from there because it does have support for images. So I'm yeah. guessing it's probably got support for PDFs as well. Um, just because it is, it's meant to be working with Adobe kind of um, products as well. Uh -huh. um, but it's worth trying. But if you do, if you can't do that, you can capture the PDFs in OBS and then just drag it from from there. All you need is like one frame of each slide, right? You don't need a huge long video for it. And it's a really simple solution. You can actually just um, export most um, uh, presentation softwares will allow you to export your slides as as JPEGs. You uh -huh. can actually just export those images and pull those images in because I think all video software will allow you to um, do some sort of it, yeah stuff with it, JPEGs, P PNGs, things like that. Yeah, so if, if you think about the sort of text effect thing, essentially the, the images would work exactly the same way. You literally drag them from the media pool and they will go wherever you, you drag them, you know. So you can do things like static images. You can have an image that overlays a particular um, part of your video to, you know, watermark it or something like that. Uh -huh. You can put, you know, branding. So if you've got a, a particular module code, say, you might do some kind of image for that you know th there's there's lots of different creative effects with these things but uh, yeah it is meant to be sort of working with other types of media and i've not seen anything that i've used in terms of video content that it hasn't been able to use so i'm guessing it's probably quite good in that regard but i haven't tried pdfs exactly so i'll definitely have to try that 